I've noticed in my work is that in a, um, a culture where the dominant uh, racial group is dark skinned, obviously the child with albinism stands out more. There's more of a visible contrast immediately. Having said that, in my experience, people clearly knew I was different. I got the comment, albino, ghost, whitey, snow white. Um, so people knew in my culture, but yes, uh, whenever you have a culture where there's a lack of general education, people have a low education level, lack of medical resources to understand that it's a medical condition, uh, then all of the cultural myths and all the stigma kind of take over and they end up informing what people think. So yeah, uh, you throw that all in with that level of uh, misinformation and then when you throw it into traditional witchcraft practices, as we have in a number of African countries, that the challenges can become fatal. Um, and so the issue is that there's a global level of misinformation about this genetic condition. Like when I talk to somebody in Canada or the United States or Europe or India or Africa, none of them know, for example, that a person with albinism has a visual impairment. They, they know that you're white skinned. That's about the level of knowledge most people have. In the national levels, there is an absence for, uh, there's an absence of laws on albinism specifically. Um, in the international law, international law level, there's an absence of legal instruments dealing with albinism specifically. So there's nothing legally in the whole world, as far as we know, that deals with albinism specifically. Now there's things that deal with albinism indirectly, aspects of albinism, like the visual issue. I can, I'm a person who is legally blind, so I can be considered as someone who faces disability. Um, and now we are also exploring the chances that I am facing a type of racism called colorism. Uh, not just me, but people with albinism even outside of races that are dark. So there's all this indirect legal mechanism that would apply to aspects of albinism. It will be very mosaic um, in the way it applies. So hopefully either this mosaic will lead to some kind of uh, comprehensive protection in the end, or a specific law will be enacted both nationally and internationally to cover uh, albinism. There's a number of responsibilities, both at the state level um, for public education uh, in schools, particularly in countries where there's a high prevalence of albinism. I was in Sub-Saharan Africa when some countries have one in 1,000, one in 2,000 people. Uh, even if they would take an hour every year in the public school curriculum to explain what albinism is, that it's in a rare genetic uh, disorder, that would get rid of a lot of the uh, misconception. Uh, there's a role for media to play uh, in various countries, highlighting the success of persons with albinism showing normal portrayals uh, throughout the world, really, uh, in film. We've been appealing to Hollywood film in this direction for a while to have characters with albinism who are heroes or who are just benign, um, average, everyday characters in film rather than this continual negative portrayal. Persons with albinism are just people. We're just human beings. We're not what you think we are. We are what we are, and that's human beings. We deserve dignity above all. We deserve respect. We deserve human rights protection. These are very basic things.